We have five power marketing ideas for your niche or specialty. Today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now, and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling, and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now, your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 163. You can find all of our show notes over at wbnlpodcast.com. Jenna Bryan, it's going to be a good topic today. Yes, we've been doing a little work on this whole niche. I've decided to call it niche, okay, after doing a little homework and... I came across an article that had like the spelling and the pronunciation, like I was in school and I think the common feeling out there is it's niche. Okay, because I knew this was gonna come up today, I also did my own little research on this. It's fine. And let me give you a little bit of uh, uh, not schooling, but you know, some education on the word. Actually, origin of the word, like most words, from the Latin word nidus which means nest, nidus, nest. And then it really, uh, the, the, the word niche actually kind of came back from the old French and the word was niche, and that was to build a nest, which actually turned into uh, uh, niche, actually pronounced niche in French, uh, which meant recess. So like a little recess is which a lot of us think of what niches are. And then today, from what I was finding out on uh, the thing that, yeah, it is either niche or niche, depending upon what you want to do. And they're both completely acceptable. So I would love if people would just leave the comments in the uh, comments today. Are you a niche or a niche person? This is what I do. I use the word niche, but if I'm in a house and there's a niche, I talk about a niche. Okay, well, I love that. And I'm going with the niche because I think it sounds cooler. I, I like that French connection slash, you know, the, the uh, what's the word called? Uh, uh, is it epi... Whatever the word is where you start to break down a word, there's a word for that. Ology, whatever that you'll is. Be, you'll be happy to know that Sweet Pea also is a niche uh, pronouncer. All right, well, if that's it. If Laura says it's niche, we're going with niche. And niche just sounds too like America. It's like what we do in America. We take a cool word and we just Americanize it. Okay. I so would agree with you. I am going I with, argue with you, Tana Murray. I'm going with niche. So let's dive into this. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts. Tune in and you can watch us on YouTube. A couple episodes ago, 161, we discussed niche farming ideas. And I think back then I was uneducated and I was calling it a niche. So when you watch that it's episode, not educated. it's okay to call it a niche. Yeah, I went back and forth. I think I'm like that. It's just like data or database. Yes. I use both words. Uh, I can't decide which way I want, but I'm a niche person now because it's <laughs> awesome. So. The uh, just a quick recap: What we did is we talked in 161 about six uh, niche farming ideas, and and I talked about your previous career, a surname farm, which is find people that have your same last name that own property in your area and farm that small group, hometown farm. You're not from where you currently market. Go find all the people that own property in your market that you serve and stay in touch with them. We talked about property type specialties demographic and other specialties. And what I want to say before I dive into five, have tons of ideas, we're putting it into our new training program, Real Estate Sales Builder. Uh, so I'm pulling out five, five of the, I don't know, 15 or 16 strategies that we have for how to generate business once you discover your niche. But I do want to talk about first that you just don't go pick something because you think it's cool. So you do have to do a little homework. So I'm going to recommend that you explore these questions first, do a little digging, do a little soul searching, because honestly, your niche needs to be a reflection of you. It needs to be something you're passionate about, and it's just not because you picked it because you thought it was cool. I mean, that could be a part of it, 
So the first question is, what area or segment of our business really interests you the most? Now, I'm going to share a document here in a minute. If you're watching the video, you're going to see it. If you're on our podcast audio, I'll just kind of go through it very quickly just to spark or you go to the show notes. Go to the show notes at WBNOcoaching.com, episode 163, and you'll get this laundry list of more deeper than what we did when we went into 161 because I really we really went in deep because I think the more that you get ideas from you know like look at a list of things that gets you thinking sure. so what interests you the most number first question and then what area are you already connected with in some way you know is it is for example do you live uh, in a golf course community and you're an avid golfer and, and is that something that you want to specialize in if you're in a community, an area that has tons of golf courses in it, it might be a smart idea if you totally are into playing golf and you love it and you want to be, because you, now you can take this and go so many directions. We'll share some ideas about that in a moment, but you get where I'm going with this. You just got to, you know, oh, I think I'll pick golf courses, but I don't know anything about golf. I don't know when was the last time I never golf, not for you. So the last, the last question about this is why do you want to specialize in this niche? Why? What? What? What is it? And I think there has to be a, a connection. I, I have a. I've had a client in the past who really was passionate about helping people going through a divorce because she went through a really bad divorce. So she decided to specialize in divorces, being the divorce specialist. Okay, that is a tough specialty. No. Unfortunately, there's a there's a lot of people out there that get divorced, and there's an opportunity for a niche that worked for her, but not just like wow, a lot of people get divorced. I've never been divorced, but I think I'll go ahead and do that. You're tracking with me, right, man? I mean, makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so let's just as a refresher, uh, let me kind of go through the idea of geographic. So under geographic, city, township, it could be a master plan community because you have, uh, like in Vegas, we have Summerlin as an example. It's huge. It's well renowned. Everyone's heard of Summerlin. Matt's even heard of Summerlin. He knows. I is. have because it's the gateway <laughs> to Red to Rock. Red Rock yeah. Right. So you yeah. could become a Summerlin specialist, for example, or maybe just a neighborhood or a school district or a zip code. Or if you want to be the downtown specialist in a metro area versus the, you know, uh, other areas. Right. Uh, property type. Now, this means the type of home. Right. So condos, townhomes. Multi-gen, next-gen, that's an interesting niche to, to potentially think about. I believe that's going to grow quite a bit. It's because of the just everything that's been happening that more and more people are pooling resources, not just families. So it's not just families getting together to pool their resources and live in one household. So it's homes that are going to accommodate more than one um, family type, or it could be friends. I, have, I had a client that three people retired – retired together and bought a particular home that had its own three little areas for themselves in the community or in the kitchen. They all had their own sort of wing of the house. Hey, so, Janet, you've been, uh, since you've been down in Florida, have you d looked at a lot of newer home developments down oh, there? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Are, are they building homes multi-generation? Yes. That's what they're thinking. doing that here in California, too. The Irvine Company, uh, uh, there's a huge development that's been building around uh, where the uh, El Toro right. Uh, Air Force Base used to be, and there's a lot of models in there that are multi generational, where it's two and or three units that all have their own entrances. That's uh, right. They're all connected interior with the door interior wise, but they all have the exterior entrances. So literally, you could have three separate almost domiciles in the same place. It's they're really great. They're fantastic. I think it's it's now. It's not future. It's now. And yeah. to your point, Matt, you always can learn about trends by seeing what the builders are doing. That's the builders, exactly right. The, builders, the new home builders build based on what consumers want. That's right. So check that out, right? So high-rise lofts, I mentioned golf course. You know, the list goes on. You do whatever. Gated, green. You know, do you do, are you into the whole green, um, you know, uh, designation is a designation for that new construction. You could just become a new construction uh, specialist. If, if your area has it lake waterfront beach, right? That's an area luxury second home, second vacation homes, especially if you're in an area like here in Florida, that's a great niche because there's a lot of people who are snowbirds and come in for second homes or vacation homes, resort fixer uppers, historic homes, any other type of lifestyle that's tied to a house or a home or design can architecturally, can be it. And then demographics is everything from seniors to military, 
first responders, teachers, first time home buyers, millennials, Gen X, baby boomers, you can pick one of those. International buyers and sellers, investors, newlyweds, you get the idea. Relocation, yeah. you become a relocation specialist. The, the, the other little specialty niche is probate, divorce, maybe distressed properties. And then the last one would be things around your hobbies, skills, or interests. Because believe it or not, you can build a niche around something that maybe you did in the, like we mentioned in episode 161, previous career. Um, you know, like hospitality industry, you know, uh, I've got things like professional sports, school sports, you know, pets, gardening, interior design, automobiles crafts, books, music, uh, exercise. So if you're like this fitness guru, you can, you could tie that other thing that is you, your lifestyle, maybe even have a, a little side gig that you do, a side hustle that you do. You could tie that together with what you do for it. Cause there's tons of people who are into that. You see where yeah. we're going with this. So now listen, you, you don't, don't let people always get overwhelmed. You know, I feel like I, uh, we talk about things and then it's like, oh, you know, no, the idea is we get we, what we love to do. What I personally love to do is give you ideas so that you can connect with something and go, aha, I got what I'm all about. Because it's about you, who you are, what really makes you tick and that you're excited about. If you light up and start talking about fitness or pets or whatever the heck it is or condo living because you live in a high rise or a loft, then this is the indicators. When you're having conversations with people, these are the things when you start to talk about it, you're like, huh, huh wait a minute, I should listen to myself. That's this. I like this if it's not obvious to you. Okay. And then you can build it. So let's talk about five, just five really powerful ideas to get going on your selected niche. So first go figure it out. Then number one, go get some training in it. I promise you there is, if it's a large one, one of the areas like seniors or military or green or uh, something along those lines, there's probably a certification course on it. And even if it's not, you can find certification training on divorce, distressed properties, uh, probate. Go Google it. You'll find it. We, we've got a list in the show notes for you on the, the NAR designations. Um, you can go there and start there and get some ideas. All right. And then always in these training courses and certification courses, they're going to give you ideas of, and they're going to give you help and scripts and everything, marketing tips on how to go generate some business. Otherwise they wouldn't just do the training, right? So the training is here's everything you need to know about luxury or international or resort properties. And now let's give you all these ideas of things to go do. So that's your number one thing to do. Go get some formal training on the niche if it's available. I just said niche, niche, um, back and forth, see? Old it's, habits. It's a old habits are hard. All right, number two, build an agent network with others around the country who specialize in your same niche. Now, this is really easy to do if there is a certification or a designation. So for yeah. me, military relocation professional, I have the MRP designation. What, what, what am I gonna do here? And I honestly, I've already started doing this here because I'm building out uh, among five other things we're doing here, building our training. But the goal, one of the, my goals in Florida, also in Vegas, is to make that military connection. So I, I, I'm being very intentional here in Florida. Number one thing I just did is I got veterans plates. Uh, I registered my vehicle and I got veterans plates on my car. Why? Because there is just a plethora of veterans and prior military, just even in my own community, uh, one block area uh, there, you know, uh, one little square area with four streets, there's probably six veterans living in this community here. Um, so, you know, you, you really start to embody all of, of what it is that you do uh, by getting involved in other things. So if I wanted to connect with other realtors around the country and Florida and Vegas are destination places, okay? So you build an agent network. And the very first tip I can give you is if you did get some training, there's generally a roster. You can go online. I can go online to the military relocation uh, professional MRP designation, and I can start making connections strategically with all the people in all the other cities that I want to do business with. And if I don't have a formal certification, they don't have an organized profile, I can go to LinkedIn and I can go to LinkedIn and I can put in 
agents, real estate agents in whatever city I want to start with, because maybe that's statistics are telling me people are moving here from this, this, and this place. Basically, California. Uh, there's an exodus from California, Matt. You're going to have a little more room there soon. And uh, places like Chicago and New York and are huge here in Florida, Canada as well. Uh, for people that want a second home. Uh, so anyway, you, you can dig into LinkedIn and, and search that and then look for people who also specialize in maybe the area you do. And now you have something in common with them. You can make that initial connection via phone, connect with them on LinkedIn. And then you want to do some things like send a monthly newsletter to this group once you build this whole connection. As a matter of fact, we have an entire class on this, a course on this over at WBNL Coaching called Agent Referral Network. It's really affordable. I can't remember what the price is on it. Um, but go over there and check it out. And we walk through all the strategies, the scripts. I'm just giving you two ideas here from that course. And one of them is to stay in touch with them after you connect by uh, reminding them of your referral system and staying top of mind. This is what you do with your own people that you're connecting with. And then the best idea that we have in this training course, in my opinion, is the quarterly share your success with other people meaning what's working for us. It's called the what's working for us. So, hey, everybody in my network of other people who are MRP or vet people that work with military and veterans, uh, here's something we're doing. We did last quarter. Here it is. Here's the ad. Here's the marketing piece. This got us the most business. We wanted to share that with you. Okay. Love this idea because you, you're giving, you're sharing, and then it really keeps you top of mind when referrals come that other way, okay? Very huge idea to get some business. That's number two. Number three, all right, this one's easy. Just takes a little work, and you got to do it. You have to go refresh all of your online profiles. Bum, bum, bum. You have to refresh your bio. So now you're going to go, and you're going to refresh your bio. You're going to go to including your note, your niche, your any training that you've done or certification, and then you're going to go to every place from your website to LinkedIn to all your social media sites. If you're using YouTube, Google My Business, Yelp, and uh, definitely LinkedIn. I said that already. And then your listing portal, Zillow, Realtor.com, and so forth. And make sure you put that blurb in there about what you specialize in and why somebody should work with you and what's in it for them. Okay? Easy peasy. Do that. And while you're at it, you would, uh, you know, if you're going to go work on your bio, you may take a little look at how do you refresh your, do you have a logo in your brand? You know, does it fit in with your brand, whatever your specialty is? Do you really want to go that far and say, you know, you're military specialist or, you know, something to that effect? If you're really going to go all in, then you can maybe rethink your logo. Uh, you know what I mean, Matt? Like your, sure. your. Or do you want to just have that as an extra thing that you're doing? But those are things for you to take a look at and consider. So number four idea, four, ramp up your presence on Google. All the most recent things I have been seeing, because we're students of everything here at WBNL Coaching around marketing and what are the latest trends. And Google's not going away. Zillow is doing its thing. So all the people that are anybody in this marketing biz in any, not just the real estate space, definitely the real estate space, but all everyone's talking about, you really need to own it on Google, all right? So Google your business, Google My Business is free. So hopefully you already have a Google My Business and this is an opportunity obviously for you to really network and put, you know, put your specialty in here. Um, but man, there's so much more. I was just talking to Matt about how we needed to get back. I had no idea how they have changed the, the, the Google My Business uh, dashboard and all, how easy it is to work with now and how it's turned into a bit of a social media platform yeah. in a weird way. Adding, you can add your products, which which if you're a store, you, it would be your products, but if you're a real estate agent, it could be everything from listings. You could put those up there. You could put things like your specialty that you're doing. Maybe you did a webinar on relocating, military relocation, I'll stick with my theme here. And that video is there, and it's something that you use in all your marketing. We could put that thing on YouTube. I mean, on um, obviously YouTube, but you can put it in your Google My Business area. Photos, all that, very powerful. You got to get Google reviews, right? You got to get reviews on all platforms, especially if it's in your niche. Your niche. That's a combination of those two words. Uh, a thing that's really been out for a little bit here, and agents are starting to get it, is the Google service ads. So go check that out. That's starting to pop up. And 
Google makes you go through a certification process and then you have to pay a fee to do this. But I have been talking to some of my clients. One of my clients yesterday uh, is getting leads from this big time, man. I love it. It's awesome. And she's not spending that much money. And she was telling me it was, it, it's I, a shout out to uh, Jessica again, my Peoria, Illinois superstar. We were doing a coaching session and I was talking about this and she's like, Oh my gosh, Jim, we just went through the certification on this and we are now a Google verified. And what happens is people type in real estate agents in Peoria, a pops Jessica ball team. And it says Google certified and it's a very top of the search results. And what she said, what's so cool, Matt, is that she gets um, a call and, it, and it's like a little whisper that says before the call is connected. So she knows it's coming from Google. That's awesome. That's the coolest thing I heard. It was That's like, very cool. It's like, like you got a lead from Google and they have gotten leads from this. It's straight up the best thing I've heard. The Google That's service cool. has lately. It's going to. It's going to be hard to get into it. It's one of those things that's already out there. It's been out there for a little while and not everybody knows about it. So now some of you who listen to us know about it. And then you can obviously advertise on Google with AdWords, display ads. So those are the paid areas, but just get the Google My Business and more Google reviews and maximize what you can do on that Google My Business. It's going to make a difference. Get reviews. That's going to get people to choose you. And lastly, my favorite tip because this is what it's all about. You've got to do video. So start a video show. You know, if you don't have YouTube already, start YouTube now and start really focusing on your niche. If you already have YouTube, then add a new playlist that's all about your new cool niche that you're going to be all about doing. And you're going to create monthly. Just start with monthly. I know it's a lot. Then you're going to get to buy monthly and ultimately what you want is weekly videos that you're doing around this it doesn't have to always be about your niche but you want to tie it in but you can tie in local businesses you can do all kinds of other things do an evergreen series that can sit up there that talk about how to do it i see a couple people doing this so well just breaking things down you know about about that uh get video client testimonials as well they can pop up in there and then obviously when you do video the beautiful thing about video is when you do it you can do so much more with it. You don't have to just put it up on YouTube. You can take that uh, video and you could have a virtual assistant take, cause it's not the best use of your time to do this yourself, help you with breaking it down and breaking it into parts and posting it up on social media. So you have a whole month's worth of, of content if you wanted to off of one video, you can create a blog post. You have content to send to your, clients now in a, a newsletter that you send out you know what you know what i mean like you can you can put all, all the platforms love video so you can add it up to there and and just get a lot of mileage off of one video all right so that's the five ideas you know it's a lot to think about and there's lots more that you can do but if you just got started with those five ideas you'd be well on your way to generating some business from your new exciting passionate niche. That's right. And Jan O'Brien mentioned the agent referral network. Uh, that course is $147. You can go over to wbnlcoaching.com forward slash here. The link is on here, but it's not easy one. So just go to wbnlcoaching.com and then go to my courses and you can get, uh, or go, you know, to my, go to the store. Yeah, that's yeah. Go to the store. All right. And you can see everything else that we have. So that's it. I'm very excited about this whole idea. I'm working on it. This is why I want to share the idea. I'm working on it myself. We're just sharing ideas that we're working on and we'll keep you posted on how it's working for us. Okay. That's right. All right, everyone. That's a wrap for the WBNL podcast where real estate and reality meets episode 163. All of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jan O'Brien, We've been talking about the end of the pandemic kind of start that light at the end of the tunnel. It just feels like it's getting closer and closer and closer I agree. By, by the week, you know, just with some of the new CDC guidelines for vaccinated people. And in, in California, all of the theme parks opened up or are actually opening up tomorrow or have just recently opened up, which, you know, might not sound like a big deal, but from an economical standpoint, it is freaking huge. I mean, with Disneyland closed for 14 months, you don't think that killed uh, Anaheim and the surrounding uh, businesses around there. It's absolutely just incredible. 
you know how much revenue that brings into the city as well as all theme parks around and not just theme parks restaurants and stores and everything it's just kind of nice we're getting, we're getting there well right? here's the question i have when are you and laura gonna feel going to feel comfortable going back to Disney. Well, for us, it's not really so much about feeling comfortable because I would go back today because I, I feel comfortable being outside and I would, you know, you, it, there's still a mask requirement there. Um, uh, so I, I, it's not the comfortableness of it. It is the uh, accessibility part to me. Um, I love Disneyland, but you know, for crying out loud, I worked there for seven years and went there every day and Laura worked there for 19 years. So, you know what I mean? It's great to be there, but also I want to be able to do things when I do go there. So right now, not everything's open. Not all the restaurants are open. Uh, That's what okay. we do, you know? That's so, for them. Right. And the, capa their, 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 uh, the capacity of people they're letting in is, is really low. It's only 25%. So I, I'm gonna, we're going to wait until it opens really more back up again. And it's not so much about the safety, although that is a concern. I think everyone's doing a good job with that here in California anyway. And I, you know, I'm not, that's not the thing. It's just, I want to be able to experience it when we go back. Sure. Right? We want to have a 25% uh, experience. It's kind of limited. Yeah. So that's, we're going to wait. We're going to wait for a little bit on that, but it's exciting. I mean, I've been watching the blogs and, and uh, you know, online stuff about people going back and, you know, we're Disney fans, but we're not crazy Disney fans. And there's yeah. people that are like, you know, although I have to say, I might get a little choked up when I walk back in there, but I've been seeing videos of people crying and it's <laughs> I love it. I know. It's, you know what? It's cool. This it's is so powerful what we're talking about here. Last week, we talked about 10 uh, ways to cope with COVID fatigue. And one of them was to plan your trips or some, plan something to look forward to or update your bucket list kind of ideas. Because okay. we do need this. We have been locked down on various levels and not doing what our, what we are normally doing for all everything up prior to, you know, prior to the pandemic. and. It's important if it's something to hope for. Hope is eternal, okay, and it's powerful. And you're you're talking about it right here, like just the idea. That's why I asked the question. If that's the idea that it might not be now, but it could be this year, wow. that build up to be able to go do that is going to be awesome and yep. exciting. And I'm gonna, you guys have been there a million times, uh, yes. hundreds of times, but it's not going to be anything like the first time you get to go after not being there for a year. Oh, it's going to be year. great. Well, you know, what? yeah, exactly. Um, after our podcast last week, Laura and I were talking too about, you know, we had, like we had talked last week, we're going to New York in November and we we were, um, we always watch a show on Smithsonian Channel on the weekends. We've seen it a million times. It's called Aerial America. Have you ever seen that show? It's great. They go through all 50 states and they have a couple other type of shows too there where there's just a flyover and description of the states. So they take, they look at landmarks and different things and talk about the history of all the states. I love the show. But we've seen literally all of them so many times that now it's just kind of background and we we, we kind of plan. So on this, this last Saturday or Sunday, one of the two, it's on both days, we were planning our trip to New York and kind of talking about all the different things we wanted to do. And then we started talking about our 30th wedding anniversary, which is in October, which I also talked about last week that we wanted, we were thinking about going to Yosemite, but I couldn't get the room that I really wanted. And we want to go back there next time full bore with everything we want so we decided not to go there and we happened to be watching the uh washington state episode of aerial america and we thought you know what let's go to seattle for our 30th anniversary which we did on our 20th anniversary and we we booked our room and we planned our you know our little three-day getaway and it was just like to your point it was fun to plan and it's fun to have something to look forward to so now we have two trips planned you know the four or five months from now that uh, will be uh, giving That's us an album. Pardon me? Yeah, yeah, anniversaries in October? Yeah. October yeah. 6th or something like that? October 5th, yeah. So and we're, and we're excited about that because it was always like, what are we going to do? Not that we're not big into there has to be something on a particular you know, but 30 is pretty big. That's pretty big year, right? And we love Seattle. I, I, I really, Seattle and the national parks and topography and just what's available in the state of Washington is pretty amazing. That's a pretty incredible state. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, if I had to live anywhere else besides California, it just might be Washington. Wow. I know. All right. Well, anyway, it is so here. I'm happy about uh, yeah. I'm happy about uh, that we're getting to a place with with the vaccines that um, you know things are starting to open up a little bit. Agreed. Feeling good. Just keep it going, folks. Let's stay positive. There's plenty of things out there for us to do. Uh, stay safe, but there's plenty of opportunities for business, even though the 
market, the housing market is crazy with low inventory. Don't, don't be, don't despair. Hang in there. It's all, there's opportunities if you just go seize them. That's right. All right, everyone. Good stuff today, Jan O'Brien. Thank you for all of that. Everyone get up, get out, uh, be safe, you know, mask up. If you're in that category that still needs to mask up, which, you know, still kind of technically is everybody. Um, and be forever wandering, but not lost. Thank you.